today is October 12th, 2020 at 6 p.m. and this meeting's called to order. Uh, at this time, we'd like to ask you to turn your electronic devices off. Um, <laughs> for those of you joining us for, for the first time, this meeting's conducted much like a council meeting. As such, uh, we'll have a presentation from staff for each application. There'll be a question and answer session between staff and the board. Once those questions have been satisfied, we'll have the applicant come forward, tell us a little bit about the application, uh, and then we'll open it up for uh, anyone here in attendance that would like to uh, come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to uh, said application. Uh, we do ask that uh, you come forward one at a time, that you space it accordingly so that we can uh, disinfect the podium as much as possible and we'll be as quick as possible. It doesn't look like we're gonna have a whole lot of tra traffic. Um, uh, the, we do ask that you uh, direct all your questions to the board, uh, not to the applicant or staff, and we'll do our best to get, or I'll do my best to get those questions answered for you. Um, the first item on the agenda is item 2020-403. This is a zoning request Z20-011, rezoning from GC to R15 for the development of one single family home at a density of 1.6 units per acre. It's uh, 0.61 acres in land lot 592, also known as 1529 Roswell Street. Thomas Trevis is the applicant. Mr. Staubs, can you give me the background, please? Good evening, Joey Staubs, Planner 2 with Community Development. This is zoning case Z20-011. Um, your recommendation tonight will go to Mayor and Council on November 16th. This is a picture of the zoning map for the area. Um, subject property is 1529 Roswell Street. It's a little over half an acre. There's an existing single family structure on it and the applicant is uh, wishing to demolish that structure and build a new single family home but the existing zoning is general commercial, as is several of the lots al along Roswell Street, future commercial, limited commercial, and general commercial. Um, so it just needs to be rezoned in order to enable a new house being built there. The future land use map uh, shows uh, most of the properties are moderate density residential, and then to the south is medium density residential. Just a quick overview of the site plan. It be re rezoned to R15 and have all the R15 um, setbacks, front 35, side 10, rear 30. Have a side entry garage. And um, since they are increasing impervious coverage above 35% to 50%, they'll be uh, required to provide stormwater detention, essentially water quality uh, program. As mentioned, there's one variance for the impervious coverage uh, up to 50%. These are the proposed elevations of the house and pictures of the subject property and the adjacent property. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning from GC to R15 for a density of 1.64 units per acre with the uh, following conditions. Standard conditions regarding the architectural components, um, requiring utilities to be underground, requiring them to be responsible for any traffic improvements deemed necessary, uh, no debris to be buried, They'll have to comply with the city's tree ordinance and that plan will have to be prepared by a landscape architect. Everything will be sodded and then again, the tree planning schedule. Standard conditions applying to the site plan itself, the standard con special conditions with the standard R15 setbacks allowing the increase of impervious coverage to 50%, provided a water quality program, program is in place. They'll be required for any water and sewer improvements, any stormwater improvements, 
and they will be tied to the site plan and the elevation submitted with the application. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Stobbs? Okay, thank you, sir. At this time, we'd like to have the applicant come forward and tell us a little bit about the plan. If you could just give us a moment to wipe everything down, it'd be great. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Thomas Trebus, and uh, this house is going to be for my wife and myself. It's kind of our dream house to build, and we're kind of looking forward to the process. This is a house I think was in, built in the early 1940s, and it's been there obviously ever since. And uh, I'm not exactly sure why it was general commercial, zone general commercial, but to conform to what we're looking to do, bring it into the R15 zoning. Um, that's about it. All right. Any questions for Mr. Trevis? All right. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Uh, at this time, we'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to the application. Please come forward one at a time. Okay. Okay, there's no public comment. Any further questions or discussion for the applicant and or staff? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bentley is on the line. <laughs> Forgive me, this uh, never gets old. Ms. It looks good to me. Uh, just so we're clear, that is our Ward 3 um, Commission Chair person or Commission or <laughs> says Chair. Oh, my God. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, so he's joining us by phone because of uh, COVID reasons, Mr. Keith Bentley. So that's who that is. All right. So any other discussion? No further discussion. At this time, I'd like to ask for a motion. Keith, they're taking a motion. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve zoning request D20 011. We have a motion to approve Mr. Keith Bentley. We have a second um, from JD. All in favor? All right. And then the Keith, application. Keith, how did you vote? I yes. vote in favor. Yeah, the motion to approve. Oh, oh, himself. Can you vote against yourself? Okay, okay, geez. The application is approved 6 0. Good luck with your project. All right. Hit the wrong one. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Next item on the agenda is 2020 404. Uh, this is zoning request Z20 12. Uh, zoning request Z20-12. This is rezoning from R12 to R8 for the development of two single-family homes at a density of 4.84 units per acre. This is uh, 0.413 acres in the landlot 664, a.k.a. 2588 Bates Street. Uh, Bakari Brooks is the applicant. Uh, Mr. Staubs, the background, please. This is zoning case Z20-012. Again, your recommendation tonight will go to council on November 16th. Subject property is 2588 Bates Streets, 0.413 acres. It's a vacant lot. The proposed use is two new single family detached residences. The existing zoning is R12 and the proposed zoning is R8. Most of the Surrounding property is zoned R12 and RDA, and some R15. The land use is medium density residential, which allows up to six units per acre, and they, everything around there is medium density residential. 
This is the proposed site plan. Uh, I have R8 setbacks up front, 25 feet, side five, and rear of 30. They will have two individual driveways with front entry garage, garages. There will be stormwater detention either in the front and the back or however they can accommodate that um, during the civil plan design. And they will be required to provide right of way dedication and then redo the sidewalk and grass buffer along this stretch of property. Uh, it'll comply with all the R8 zoning uh, requirements, so no variances are required. These are the proposed home elevations. And then picture of the subject property. And then adjacent properties. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning from R12 to R8 for two single family units at a density of 4.84 units per acre with the following conditions. Same as the, the case before, the standard conditions regarding the architectural components, requiring utilities to be underground. Uh, they will be responsible for any traffic improvements. Uh, no debris to be buried underground. They will comply with the tree ordinance. Uh, yards will be solid, sodded and they will comply with our tree schedule have the following setbacks, the front 25 feet, side of five, rear of 20. At a minimum 20 foot length driveway and they will uh, be required to dedicate right of way along Bates Street to achieve 25 feet from center line to the property line. And they will be required to install new curb gutter and sidewalk at the front edge of the property. Have a maximum height of 35 feet, and they will comply with the fire access requirements, water and sewer uh, requirements, and stormwater management requirements. And again, it'll be tied to the site plan submitted with the application. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Stobbs? Keith, Keith, do you have any questions for Mr. Stobbs? Hey, Keith, do you have any questions for Joey? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, at this time, we'd like to have the applicant come forward and tell us a little bit about your application. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. It's an opportunity to breathe. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what we were doing. With uh, you there. Good. My name is Bakari Brooks, and uh, I'm the builder and developer. Uh, essentially, we're just trying to bring some more affordable housing to the city. It's a uh, it's a real need, not only in the city of Smyrna, but a lot of other cities. And we're just, you know, we saw that opportunity there. It's an area that I think is up and coming. You have a lot of developments going on right around that roundabout. And uh, my partner and I, we thought that it's a good opportunity to get in there and get some quality, affordable housing. That's really what we're trying to do. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Brooks? You want to, Mr. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. You want to, um, you want to define affordable housing? What's the price point you're looking at? Sure. So we're trying to get around 18 to 1,950 square feet heated, mm -hmm. total of about 2,500 square foot total. And we're trying to keep it between 370 and 390,000. Okay. All right. Mr. Bentley, do you have any questions for Mr. Brooks? Any questions for Mr. Brooks? Keith, do you have any questions for the applicant? So far. Uh, not really questions. I just uh, I, I had a conversation with Mr. Brooks about the project uh, a week or so ago, I guess, and uh, it looks like a good project for that neighborhood. And I just uh, think it's it's just a good thing for that that neighborhood. Good thing okay. all around. All right. Any other questions? All right. Good. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. All right, this is a public hearing. At this time, we'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to the application. Okay. 
the record shows no public comment. Um, any further discussion? Mr. Bentley? No, no Would questions. You, okay, this is, this is uh, also in Ward 3, correct? Somebody? Yes. Okay. All right, well, I'd like to entertain a motion. Um, yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, zoning request Z20-12. Motion to approve, Mr. Bentley. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Rice. All in favor, please vote. I can do the math now. Your application is approved 6 0. Good luck, uh, Mr. Brooks. Welcome to Smyrna. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, ordinance, uh, approval of an ordinance. It's ORD 2020 1 2. This is an ordinance to amend the section 719.8, 4, and J, and 1502.9 of Appendix A in the zoning ordinance for the requirement of sanitary sewer analysis for the zoning of commercial development, mixed use development, or residential development with 10 or more dwelling units, and to authorize mayor, the mayor to sign and execute all related documents. Um, Mr. Martin, the background, please. Good evening. Uh, this is a text amendment that's brought to you guys by the um, city's public works department. Um, it, it's an attempt to bring us in compliance with the North Georgia Metropolitan Water District's requirement for um, having a sewer capacity analysis done for all um, new developments or large developments. You guys will make a recommendation today um, and you guys are hearing it because it's, it's amendments to our city zoning ordinance, which is under your purview. Um, you guys will make a recommendation today and then it'll go to mayor and council uh, next Monday for a final action. Um, the, the zoning amendment's been posted and advertised appropriately in the MDJ. Um, But as I told you earlier, we're looking to amend two sections of the city zoning ordinance. Section 719 is the redevelopment overlay district, um, which is a zoning district that allows for redevelopment of um, existing properties provided that you meet um, certain requirements for that overlay. Um, and section 1502.9 uh, which deals with the application requirements for rezoning. Um, so those two amendments were adding the requirement for um, the sewer capacity analysis to be included with our letter of water and sewer availability. So the, the availability issue is where the water and sewer are located. The capacity analysis deals with the, um, the impact to the system with respect to the dis discharge from the development. Is this discharge going, is, is there enough capacity in the line to, to handle it? Or does the line need to be upgraded to um, support the development? So those are the things that they'll be looking at. Um, our, our recommendations are as follows. It, it would read like this, it'd be provide, a, and this would be under section 719 under the, art or the redevelopment overlay, provide a letter from the Smyrna's Public Works Director or the Cobb County Water System verifying water and sewer availability and capacity for all commercial development, mixed use development, or residential development of 10 units, 10, of 10 or more dwelling units. Also for, also for developments on the city's sanitary sewer system, at a fee of $1,000, the city of Smyrna will conduct the capacity analysis to study the impact analysis of, of the new development or redevelopment to the sanitary sewer system. And if the sanitary sewer system has adequate capacity to support the wastewater from the new development or redevelopment. Um, so th that's the same uh, verbiage for both section seven, 719 and 1502 um, is basically requiring it. The city, 
does not have its own capabilities to do this analysis. So we have to, um, we have to hire Croy to do the analysis for us. So th this fee is the pass-through fee from, from the applicant to Croy to run the analysis to do that. Cobb count, if it's Cobb County property that's being annexed into the city and it's on Cobb County's water system, they can run that analysis. I don't know exactly what those fees are, but if they provide a letter from Cobb County saying there's adequate water and sewer available for um, the development, we'll accept that. But that, that's where we're at today. We're recommending approval. Cobb, our Public Works Department is recommending approval. Um, so that's what we're bringing forth to you guys today. Okay. Um, if they do the analysis and they determine that the impact from the developments, you know, requires the, the, the sewer line to be upgraded, who pays for that? Um, t typically the developers are going to pay for that. So okay. the, usually when you see our zoning analysis, when we make the recommendations to you guys on, on those zoning actions, you'll see one stipulation that says the, uh, any sanitary sewer and water improvements deemed necessary during the plan review process will be the responsibility of the of the developer or the applicant so that's how we handle that i mean we've been addressing this for a while we just haven't had it codified and in the code um in in the north georgia metropolitan water district requires it be in the code so we're just bringing it into compliance with that and if this is approved, when would it uh, when would it take effect? I'd have to ask uh, I'd have to ask uh, Frank Martin when he wants it, but I think it's going to be effective immediately. Okay. Monday, so yeah, <laughs> immediately. Literally. <laughs> Literally. So okay. any questions? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't know if he was going to have it start at the first of the year or immediately. So that's why. Gotcha. I was any questions for Mr. Martin? Yep, Gary. So would this uh, fee affect things that have already been voted on by planning and zoning as we'd be like moving forward before it goes to the Maryland Council? Good question. Um, yeah, probably they would have to pay for that analysis at this point. Okay. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think this year that we've had anything that would meet the threshold um, of what's going on already. Um, as far as what we've approved, everything's been small residential developments to this point. So the two actions you took tonight, those type of developments are not required to have a sewer impact study done. Hmm. So they would be exempt from this requirement. Okay. Very good. Thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. Uh, we'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that doesn't work for the city that would like to come forward and speak in favor of our opposition to the application. Uh, Mr. Stobbs did not wait for the sanitization of the podium prior to engaging in his well. demerits for you, Mr. Stobbs. All right. All right. So around him every day. Um, let the record show there's no one in, no public comment. All right. This time I'd like to entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Bentley, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry. Um, at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion. Mr. Jones, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? We have a second, Mr. Smith. All in favor, please vote. And if Mr. Bentley, if you could vote in the affirmative. I'm in favor. Okay. So it is approved 6-0. All right, the next item on our agenda is uh, another ordinance change. It's ORD 2020-16. It's a review of a proposed ordinance uh, for code amendments to section 402 and 714 to the city's zoning ordinance. It's proposed to add a definition related to outdoor re recreational facility and to list outdoor recreational facility as a permitted use within the light industrial zoning district. Mr. Staubs, the background please. Code amendment to light industrial um, tax amendment. Your recommendation will go to Mayor and Council on November 16th. 
So we had a request from a existing business to allow outdoor recreation facilities at a property zone light industrial and we saw that the current ordinance does not permit that. So we are recommended, re recommending a small change to the permitted uses in light industrial, uh, 714.23, which as it currently states is indoor recreation facilities, all activities must take place within a wholly enclosed building. We are looking to amend that to allow indoor and outdoor recreation facilities and requiring outdoor recreation facilities be screened when adjacent to residential property. We're also uh, requesting an, uh, a definition for outdoor recreation facility, that'd be 402.49.1. And that definition will read as follows. Outdoor recreation facility means an outside area designated and equipped for the conduct of sports and leisure time activities other than tennis courts or golf courses, which includes, but is not limited to baseball, softball, volleyball, soccer, football, and lacrosse. This is a definition consistent with what Cal Cobb County currently has. And we are recommending approval. Okay, any questions, Mr. Stobbs? No. All right, thank you, sir. This is a public hearing. We'd like to ask if there's anyone in attendance that would like to come forward and speak in favor of or opposition to this proposed ordinance change. Mr. Bentley, any comments or questions? No, thank you. Okay, we have no public comment as well. So if I could entertain a motion. A motion to approve Mr. Bartlett. Second, Mr. Rice, please vote. Mr. Bentley in the- I, I vote in favor. Six zero, thank you, sir. All right. I believe the last item on our agenda is approval of the minutes. Is that correct? I feel like I've lost something. All right. Uh, are the board members in possession of the minutes? Do they uh, vote to approve the minutes as presented? Uh, please vote. Uh, a motion to approve the minutes, please. Uh, motion to approve, Mr. Jones. Uh, second, Mr. Smith. Please vote. The uh, minutes are approved. Mr. Bentley, vote to approve the minutes. Vote in favor. In favor. The minutes are approved 6-0. All right, is there any further discussion? Nope. This meeting is adjourned at 6.27 p.m.